So welcome to this session on storytelling for nonprofits. I'm your host for today's session. I'm Mayura and I run uh, an agency for nonprofits called Shrika Marketing for Nonprofits. And I'm one of the India chapter hosts for TechSoup Connect. Our uh, speaker for today is Anisha Gupta. I'm extremely delighted to have her with us today. She is the consultant lead for marketing and communications at Cuddles Foundation. So welcome Anisha. I look Thank forward you. to interacting with you. Hi, everyone. So I have remembered to hit the record button. So the agenda for today is we'll have a quick introduction to TechSoup Connect. And then I will take you through a few pro tips on uh, storytelling, mostly for non-writers. So you can get up and running and start using these tips uh, for your own nonprofits uh, storytelling process. And then we'll have a Q&A session with Anisha. And finally, we'll open the floor for audience questions. So keep your questions uh, ready. You can type them in the chat feature and I'll take them up uh, at the end in the same order. So here's a little about TechSoup Connect. TechSoup Connect is a program of TechSoup. It's, it's a global network of tech for good meetups. I think over 140 countries. And TechSoup itself is a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits with their technology needs. And here are some technology services that you can avail either for free or at very affordable prices through TechSoup. So do check them out. And uh, TechSoup in India is represented by uh, the NASCOM Foundation. Anybody can join TechSoup Connect uh, by logging into events.techsoup.org and you'll be notified of events happening worldwide. Uh, that are of and to follow TechSoup Connect India uh, this is our website and you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter please take a screenshot if you like okay now getting uh, to the topic quickly I want to start with this quote from Laurie Jacob with who's the founder of Ignited Fundraising and she's also considered a master storyteller in the nonprofit sector she says using storytelling in your fundraising is the single most powerful way to connect with, connect people to your mission and raise more money. But then not everyone does this well. In fact, most people put a list of facts together and they call it a story. So a list of facts is not really a story. Then what really is a story? I would have liked to throw this question open to the audience. If anybody would like to contribute or comment you can type it in the chat feature but let me start the story could be anything it could be a movie that you have watched or a book or it could be a blog anything that you think made for a good story what did you think made it a good story in the first place maybe a good character or maybe there was a good plot that kept you interested so there are certain elements to a good story that gets us hooked to it and uh, gets us excited about it and keep, keeps us hooked till the end of the story. So a non-profit story is actually no different. A, a good non-profit story also has a certain structure to it and a process to it. So mainly for non-writers, I wanted to take you through a few tips on the structure of a good nonprofit story that probably could be of use to you. So this is courtesy Vanessa Chase Lakshin, who is the founder of Nonprofit Storytelling. I looked at a few examples, but I thought this was the easiest that anybody could follow. So what she says is she's divided it into five key elements. So the first would be to make a connection with your audience. Because unless the audience connects with your story, they're not going to read the rest of it. So once you action and you introduce the so every story has a hero, and uh, your character to the audience uh, creates a reason for them to read the story. And once you introduce the character, you then introduce the conflict. What conflict is this? Uh, hero facing what is his challenge and then you move on to the resolution what is your solution or what is the solution to that challenge that the character is facing and once you get to the solution is when you 
have the call to action where you invite the audience to join you in your mission towards finding that resolution. So it's very similar to any good story you may have read. And I think keeping these five in mind while structuring your story will pretty much get you to write a good story. Now, what is the process that one could follow? Before we get to the process, here's an example of a very simple uh, non-profit story, but very effective. This is Cure.org's annual report. So if you see here, we can look at these elements in this uh, small little story. So the connection is made uh, by the strong visual and the line under it, uh, galley before treatment. So this gets the audience not only to connect with the story, but also curious what actually happened after treatment, if this was before. And then they introduce the character, which was the second step we saw. Meet Gally, a 14-year-old boy from Niger. And once the character is established, then we looked at the conflict. So the conflict here is his father wants nothing to do with him. Since he was five, his legs have splayed out and he has only faced rejection from his family. He's beaten by men in his community and other children have been forbidden to play with him for fear that they will be in. That's Gali's challenge or conflict. A small chance friendship between Gali's uncle and a Cure Niger employee brought Gali to us. And though the journey to healing will be long, we are grateful for the opportunity to help him. So there's your resolution. The NGO has decided to help him and is treating his problem. So what's the call to action? The call to action here is follow along Gally's progress at cure.org. So every nonprofit story uh, has a call to action that's directly linked to the goal. Why you're writing the story in the first place. And here the goal is to, of course, get people to click into the NGO website, but most, more importantly, to help establish uh, trust and credibility with the readers of the annual report. So in other words, a good nonprofit story should really do these three things. It should connect with your audience. It should make them feel something. It should make them feel something for the character. It should in, invoke enough emotions to inspire them to take action. So that's about the structure of a good nonprofit story. If we have to look at the process, I think it might look a little heavy, but try to simplify it. So I tried putting this into three simple steps. If you have to follow a process, especially for a non-writer who's not a trained writer, I think these three simple steps will get you from start to finish. So the first step really would be to have clarity on why you're writing the story. We call this a story. It has a few key hygiene elements about the piece you are about to write. Let's say we start with who the first question you have to ask yourself is who is going to read your story? Who is your audience? What is the goal? Why are you writing the story? What is your key message? So what are you trying to convey to the audience? So in the story example we saw, the key message was to let readers know that cure.org is offering medical treatment options to underprivileged children and youth in maybe rural Africa. So that's the key message that you want to get across to your audience. Unless you have clarity on it, you might write a two-page story and the, and the reader will not know what exactly you're trying to convey. What format is basically, is it, is it a written story? Is it a blog? Is it a podcast? It helps to know how you're going to convey the story. What channels, where will you be sharing the story? Is it in your annual report? Is it you know, on social media? Is it on your website, your YouTube channel? So getting these answers in place will give you more clarity on how to approach your story. The next thing is finding your character. Find the hero of your story. Whose story are you going to tell? Do some research on the person. Also see if there are other people who can tell her story. Identify them. And one, once you've done that, Prepare your questions. 
and more importantly get your story first hand as in do your own interview try and talk to interact with the person yourself and don't rely on other know about that person it has more, um, authenticity and emotional connect when you write, when you interact with the person and know the person you before writing her story so the last step would be record write and rewrite so i would say don't start immediately with writing your story listen to the recording of your story if you have recorded the interview or if you have written it down read it multiple times till the story is really ingrained in your own mind and then begin to write and write as you speak don't try to find the perfect language to write and once you finish writing is when you my ear of cut out if you can hear us and you're still on the call can you maybe type in the chat box please start our interview with uh... hi my ear are, are you there your screen uh, is not sharing anymore now yeah i don't mean to share it i'm turning my video on okay okay great you cut out for the last few seconds there about 15 30 seconds well, i was yeah. just saying that i'll start my interaction with anisha okay hi anisha hi again anisha has been in the communication business for a long time and uh, especially in the non profit domain and i'm sure she's figured out storytelling in her own way and uh, it will be interesting to know her perspective on this so i want to start by asking her do you have a process that you follow for non profit storytelling and could you share it with our audience yeah and uh, since we have three hosts and i have two people in the mr venkat subramaniam so hello to all of you all so yes to answer your question i do close to the one that you mentioned always begin with the brief first it yes. is uh, most important to begin with that brief and bunch of questions my most favorite one is and the one that i never miss out on is to know what feeling do i want to leave the audience with so whoever is briefing me say if it comes from the fundraising team or program team or sometimes even someone who is wanting to launch a recruitment drive that's the first question i ask uh, is what do i want my audience to feel and there are a bunch of feelings and emotions out there so i say that happy and sad is definitely off limits so you can choose between a whole bunch of them like anger fear uneasiness hope joy nostalgia or even and so these are that that's that's one of the main questions that i begin with and then of course there are a bunch of the others that you mentioned like who is your audience and it doesn't just okay, my audience is the donor because because that's a very vague and uh, overarching response what you would want to know is who is this donor is he 25 or is it a she is it are they in the age group of 25 to 35 or are they after that are they much older because that helps you craft your the language you'll use also you want to know what's their intention why are they interested in uh, why would they be interested in this piece of communication that you're writing for them and then there are the other questions when it's going out where it is going to be you mentioned format so is it a social media email that i'm going to be sending out you know, who is it going from who is sending it out in whose name will it go and what is finally the call to action what is that one message that i want to leave them with and what is that action i want them to take after they read the piece so it's not enough to say i just want to make people aware but to what end do i want to make them aware do i follow my page do i want them to say send me a resume and them to say uh, do i want to tell them go donate at this link or start a fundraiser so your call to action will always be important so yeah i hope a uh, roundabout way of answering your question but i always start with the brief and uh, that one uh, question of what feeling do you want to leave them with i think that's a very important uh, question to ask yourself and i'm sure that would be central to getting people to take action right unless you yeah. make them feel something it so considering that as a non profit you have to communicate with the audience on many different channels social media website blogs newsletters which of these channels in which of these channels does, does storytelling play a critical role and why would you say that so my view is that all of mm. them it, it plays a critical role 
is my definition of a story is not about that it has to have of uh, this is a child and this is what is happening to the child and this is the problem etc even a verb is a story honesty mm. is the best policy or laughter is the best medicine these are also stories these metaphors and proverbs are also stories in themselves they're short stories they say a lot in that one line i i would suggest that even if, if you're a non writer especially then broaden your understanding of the story doesn't only have to be about a person doing something it all goes beyond that having said that like i said all of these um platforms and all of these channels use uh, storytelling in in some format and it would be important because it's it's also important to understand what is storytelling and therefore you understand which mediums because storytelling typically like you would mention when you had that uh, the first slide on it's a special bond between uh, you and your and the person you're communicating in this case if it's a supporter or beneficiary it creates an emotional bond between the two of you and uh, too often what tends to happen i think you had mentioned very early on that i'm sorry can everyone hear me yes absolutely okay all right you had mentioned very early on when you showed the slides that you slap statistics and is that qualify as a story and you rightly said that it doesn't what tends to happen is that in, in the nonprofit world especially if you've not spent some time telling stories or you're not used to working with with words tend to assume that that if i have put these statistics and i'm telling my story well that's not a story because it's not creating that emotional bond thing that creates an emotional bond is a story and uh, each of these achieve that depending on how you want to use them they have the mediums to be able to to, to show you how to do that right yeah we couldn't hear last each of these mediums like uh, newsletters and emails blogs and all of them have the opportunity to tell stories um, um it could be in the format of an actual story the story of gali that you mentioned uh, of the child from niger so it could be something like that or it could be even metaphorical but it could be a story as long as it's creating an emotional bond between you and the person you're speaking to or you're uh, appealing to and okay, I, i think like to add you and oh okay is there a problem at my end yeah i i heard, I heard everything okay. i think everybody is fine yeah oh um, i'm here yeah um can everyone hear me able to hear and uh, see her yes okay i can't uh, it's only her stream that has gone off it's showing here uh... continue anyway uh, okay great if anybody has an issue please uh, let me know so anisha thanks for that i think like you said a story need not be about one single character and talking about that one person even a visual can be can you do uh, storytelling in your own organization let's say in cuddles to set your non profit apart from similar organizations is that also something that good storytelling can uh, help you do to set yourself apart uh, by creating a certain narrative about your organization a certain tone of voice uh, actually to your to your organization itself can you speak a little about that Yes that's a, that's a wonderful question and yes one should be able to do that and uh, stories are meant to create consistently if they are, if stories are told in a particular way they can create a certain narrative about the organization so it can help you create uh, a certain narrative about your organization and create a certain brand for your organization for cuddles we it's it, we consciously focus on the children and their caregivers a lot more so cuddles for those okay, who, uh, of you okay i i cannot know. hear anisha so somebody will have to tell me once she fin- sure i i can do that my dear don't worry i can put it in the chat and then you can check there maybe yeah yeah i'm so sorry that mayura cannot hear me all right so yeah like i was saying that at cuddles we consciously focus on the children and their care- caregivers a lot more for those of you who don't know cuddles works for children with cancer and focusing on their nutrition specifically and we when we talk about our work it's less in terms of say 
hey, see what we've accomplished and more in terms of see what you've helped us accomplish. So whether it's in our emails, social media or our blogs, we always try and keep our beneficiaries or our supporters at the center of the story or the center of the communication that we're, uh, whatever we're trying to communicate. That's one critical element, I think, that helps us in some way, I don't know, set us apart, but it's definitely a very conscious decision to to speak about and about what the organization does in that kind of a format. There's also a lot of, uh, you will notice in the style of things being written, a lot of joy and a lot of hope because it's children. The visuals are a lot more um, there's a lot of children in the visuals. There's always childlike graphical elements included. So we definitely focus on a lot of design and we have a wonderful design a designer who works with us and uh, helps achieve that. That's, that's some of the things that we do at Cuddles consciously. And to all the other nonprofits out there who want to and can want to do that, I definitely I would suggest like start with the brand book, brand guideline, set the tone, understand and try and see what what you can as an organization, what should your tone be? What is that personality? If you notice, um, all of us have our own personalities and I have a distinct way of speaking, a distinct way of talking, the language that we use, the way we dress. It's same with your nonprofit. And uh, it's good if you're consistent. And uh, sometimes what happens is that you'll have a large team. Today, you have two people on your team. Tomorrow, there'll be four. And soon you will grow and uh, if you are a founder of a nonprofit, you won't have any control over the narrative anymore. So it's important if to set those ground rules to define where you want to see your brand. And at least with the organization, like with Cuddles, we've invested that time and energy and that thinking right at the start itself to say, this is how we want to go. But it's never too late to begin that. And it's a good exercise to do as, a, as an organization. I hope I've answered Mayura's question. Unfortunately, she cannot hear me. Thanks, thanks, Anisha. Uh, could you maybe stop and start your video again? You seem to have gone to that icon mode. You can ask the next question. Thanks. Yeah, maybe that will help me. Moving to the next question. This is a little difficult because I really cannot see your hear. Can you uh, share a few how storytelling, whatever the goal may be, or reaching out to new volunteers, or probably uh, approaching a grant maker? Could you share of how storytelling has made a big difference in helping you? So I can give you one example, which I think a lot of uh, nonprofits can benefit from is very early on, not so early on, actually, somewhere maybe a couple of years ago, we, we, we had a lot of non, a lot of the corporate supporters started asking for monthly sort of reports. And while they were being sent quarterly reports uh, and annual reports, they said, we need like monthly stories. And we realized that while we were sending stories to them as part of a template and everything on a quarterly basis, that wasn't enough. We dug deep and figured that they needed, they needed stories to be able to share with their teams so that their teams and of employees knew exactly what the company was doing in terms of CSR and everything. And it was difficult because you're a small team. How do you get stories? And getting stories, as many of you may realize, is not an easy task, especially the kind of stories I'm talking about, but it's field stories, right? It's not easy because quite often the people on the field are not necessarily great story, are not necessarily great writers. They, they may be very good at narrating an incident or they're very good at their jobs, which is being doctors on the field or nutritionists on the field or social workers on the field. But they're not necessarily adept at writing or have the time to do the kind of writing that a story would need. Can everyone hear me? Siddharth, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. One of the key things we did then was to create a format of... Um... Mayura, let's finish up your question. As soon as, as, soon as the question's done. Um, so, okay. This is There's funny. a bit more specifically She's... about storytelling and uh, fundraising. She's still finishing just the last bit of her answer. As if I'm going to log out and log back in, I think that will help me because uh, please. So sure, should we type the next question in the chat before? Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Never mind. Go on, go on. Anish. I'll, I'll go on. Yeah. So the thing is that I think early on we decided, like I said, that there was a problem with the corporates wanting monthly stories and uh, feels the people on the field are not necessarily adept at writing. So we created a very simple format, a Google form that we would send to them with a bunch of questions that we needed answered. 
and we didn't we didn't make it look like they had to write stories because they were struggling with writing stories we just said that these are a few questions that we have in terms of that would help us write the story so think of it as raw data for the stories and they would just fill up those google, they'd fill that google form up and we'd get the responses and then we had a, a writer at our end who would create a story out of that data that was coming to us from the field and that i think really helped it was something uh, we and we, we also what we said was that we just need five stories a month and so people don't feel overwhelmed and uh, because at least cuddles is spread across the country so you could pick the five every month so that not one person is feeling overwhelmed every month with uh, this additional work and that helped and uh, i think and now we get to learn from the corporate supporters that that's something that they really look forward to that their employees look forward to and they love uh, receiving it and they love sharing it and it's also written like a story and not just it's an emotional story about the impact that they're making uh, in the lives of these people so this was a, a good example of how it worked how it was used and how we simplified the process for non writers but still made sure that we had a story at the end of uh, five stories at the end of every month and what we did was that we don't let that good story go to waste because that's the other thing you got to remember a good story is hard to come by don't waste it use it everywhere you can put it on social put it on whatsapp put it on email put it on an emailer or a newsletter however you planning to you and wherever you plan to use it in an event in a conversation but make sure you that you use your stories because um they're very powerful so don't let them just you know hang around in a folder and then forget about them that's that's one of the things that worked very simple thing that worked that i wanted to talk about the other is actually and i do have something that i can show you it's very simple i'm going to share my screen is that all right sadat and mayura yeah please go ahead oh you can hear me thank god okay all right then yeah okay <laughs> Okay this is so this is an this is an email all right and it it says goodbye cancer hello school and it's it's again what we wanted to tell them was that we we had this new statistic from one of our from our team from program team that up to 95 94% of children are more likely to stick with their treatment plan when nutrition is a part of it that's a very complicated line but basically children go on to finish their treatment when they when nutrition is a part of it so we decided to how do we simplify it we we spoke about what children about giving children a future and that's why hello school and i'm not going to go into the integrity the intricacies of the email but what in front of you is basically again like the child a child story it says that we are a poor family that depends on daily wage and then it talks about how with the advice of uh, the people on from the field they have access to nutrition this child can go ahead and do whatever he wants to do and then we had this had in this little gif that says goodbye cancer hello cricket home cycling basically life outside uh, of a hospital and uh, if you notice we use a lot of metaphors and uh, feed the fight and uh, feed hope so that's also something that helps with with storytelling so that's also something that helps with storytelling is that whatever your non profit does it's easy it's the easiest thing that you could do is that look at the kind of field that you're in are you building homes then see if there is a home building metaphor that you can use are you in in food then look at a food related metaphor that you can use are you talking about families then look at a family related belonging related metaphors that you could use plenty of words out there if you google them you'll find them so that that just gives some kind of a texture and flavor to your story and makes it makes it stand out and helps people remember because people don't have the time to read a lot they just really your supporters or anyone you look at will only read the catch phrases and that's true of you also i'm sure if you could look at how you consume information whether it's on social media or whether it's in a newspaper or some online article you tend to look at the big large headlines and the ones that are bold and standing out and tend to remember those so you can use the same logic for when you're writing your story as well make it as visual as possible i did miss some good stuff in between but i'll look at the recording <laughs> let's talk a little more about the role of uh, storytelling in fundraising mm -hmm. uh, how do you think ngos can make better use of storytelling fundraising goals well uh, storytelling is the thing 
for uh, fundraising and i think uh, good fundraisers know that and i actually tend to be at least in my experience the people i've met good fundraisers tend to be very good storytellers as well and the reason i say that is because giving is an emotional act giving is not so much of a transactional act it's a lot to do with how you feel when you're approached it's a lot to do with how you're ple- appealing to that person's own story about themselves so quite often people give let's look at the reasons that people give some of the reasons this is not written in stone this is just based on experience and stuff i've read over the years you'll see someone who gives to when they give to a particular cause it, they also look at what does it say about me it says that me meaning the person giving that this is a person or i am that person who cares about the environment or i am a person who cares about animals i am a person who cares about children if it's an underdog story then i know what it's like to to have risen from i have a rags to riches story so i'm identifying with someone else's rags to riches story so quite often it's in it's a story that people are telling themselves when they give so it's very important as a fundraiser when you use storytelling you can use it very effectively if you apply this apply this logic that and and appeal to people like there are two sides of your brains from a scientific perspective there's the left brain and the right brain the left brain is more planning is more accounts driven managing tasks and things like that and the right side of your brain is a lot more on the emotional bent and memories and where where all of that is stored so your story has to appeal to that right side of the brain you don't want to confuse people with accounting and jargon and all of that that's not the reason they give the reason they give is this the reason they trust you is that so yes you have to include that bit that i'm trustworthy i'm credible and how can you bring that not just by throwing numbers maybe you um say you are a a non-profit that works with with anganwadis and you're looking for a sponsor and you're talking about the work you're doing with child young children and what and therefore setting the ground for what their futures will be and if if you want to build credibility for your non-profit as an anganwadi and say you're approaching a big non-profit or a fund or a one of those funding organizations having a testimonial from a similar kind of fund or it would help you a lot when that establishes credibility so it's not just important saying 50000 anganwadis in india today don't have xyz don't have an anganwadi worker great but that does not appeal to my emotional side that tells me okay that's like newspaper article right it tells me okay this is something maybe i should be interested in i'm not, i don't know but if the moment i start talking about okay here's a child and this child can be this child can have xyz life but doesn't have it because does not have this anganwadi where she or she can go to to learn or to eat and uh, is missing out on so much now imagine what this child can be and and we've robbed her of her childhood or of her future so that's a more emotional angle than saying just 50000 anganwadis don't have xyz sorry mayura you're on mute you were saying fundraising is about uh, storytelling so that is central to yeah. your fundraising process so could you share uh, maybe an example of maybe how uh, a fundraising appeal got a lot more easier probably in a crowd fund a project fundraiser storytelling made probably a, a huge challenge much easier to connect with the audience because pictures are easy yeah and not all causes are automatically emotive for example we all know that education and hunger these are causes that automatically attract funds or have more fun- funding support let's say something a little off beat maybe building an sg for women which doesn't sound so urgent in something that maybe fundraising storytelling can be a, of a lot yes, in fact the sg i think because you're talking imagine instead of talking about a group of women you pick one woman from that sg and you choose to lead from her story you choose to lead about how this woman and she may not be an indra noi or uh, she may not be uh, kiran mazumdar shaw but here she is starting her own little business and she needs your help so you can quickly make it you can make it emotive the moment you personalize it make one person and i think i want to bring in here uh, an important aspect of story i remember you were mentioned those five parts right the one i follow has like another 
two more parts to it, like almost seven parts to it. And it's not, uh, one of the key areas is the problem. What's that problem that this person is facing? So typically, there are three types of problems that a person faces. One is the problem that is very obvious. I need the money. Let's take a more example from the real world, right? Um, detergent, okay? Washing clothes, I want to wash clothes and I want clean clothes. And that's my, that's a very tactical, physical need. That's a physical problem that detergent company brand is, is, is solving. That I need clean clothes and here's my detergent. But then there are dime a dozen detergents out there then that can do the same thing. But if you notice in a detergent ad, they don't just stop at telling you that, oh, we wash your clothes. That end frame, right? The last frame you'll see, and it sounds sexist in today's day and age, but you'll have a woman like waving a hand and her husband is going to work and he's wearing a clean shirt and she's feeling, right? That's, that's the problem that people don't talk about. Like the problem of pride. It again comes to that thing that I told, spoke about in terms of feeling. What do you want to leave people with the feeling? So there is the tactical problem that we have. And then there is that internal problem that no one tells you about, but it is there. So basically when we're purchasing stuff, whenever we're giving to a cause, it's actually that internal problem that we're solving. Not so much the physical problem, not so much the very obvious physical and tactical problem that is being solved. Even in the case of like an SHG and everything, the main, the physical problem is, yeah, she needs money for a business. The internal problem is that of dignity, maybe, right? That of independence and freedom, that of pulling her family out of poverty or giving her son or a daughter a better future. So that's the feeling that you tap into and you turn it into an emotive story and don't leave it as being a very mundane I have 500 SGs, please adopt one kind of story. Got it. So it's all, it's really about getting under the uh, you know, the layers of the problem. Yeah. And getting to the emotional benefit um, yeah. that you're bringing to that person. And Correct. probably that's the, that's the emotion that the donor or the contributor also connects. Will, will identify with as well. Okay. So that's great. Things come flowing easily to you because obviously you're a trained writer and a communication expert, but not everybody is. So yeah. uh, let's say in a small or a medium nonprofit, who do you think should be doing the storytelling? Who, what should this person's professional background and skills be? If a nonprofit has to select one person to do that. So I feel like since storytelling is so close to fundraising i definitely feel like someone from the fundraising team is more suited to say to to craft a story i do think that you have to have the skills and i i kind of i think that they should like fundraise uh, most uh, nonprofits i believe should invest in it just as that you are not going to give the accounts of your organization to someone who's not a BCom or a CA, I don't have the funds. You will still not risk it. And your comms is in the same way. It's the one that's going to bring in you, bring you most supporters. So ideally, try and find someone with a comms background to do it. And and usually, I think most founders tend to be also good storytellers, even they even though they may not be may not have uh, the degrees for it or whatever, naturally they tend to be a lot more gifted. I wouldn't say gifted, but they're just, they, they're oh, probably just used to telling their story over and over and again and have been able to refine their story for all kinds of audiences. So there are two things, right? One is about who should be writing the story or the story. And there is also about, there is also this one person who should be conveying that story to the audience probably to the donors or stakeholders. So who do you think is the right person to be doing that conveying? Should it always be the founder? Or should it be It the... uh, depends on the medium, right? So if the story is going up on social media, then it's the organization. It doesn't have to be a person. And it depends on the message also. So if it's an annual report that's going out to your to your donors, then it's great if it goes from your from your founder. It definitely adds more credibility to it. So it really depends, say you're talking about programs, right? And you're talking about, uh, and you're an organization that is, deals with the um, medical equipment. Then you want your, and, and, and then you want your program staff who is a doctor talking about it, talking about the cause. So it depends on which platform, what is the message and what's your reason to put that message out. 
and based on that you can pick the pick the person to convey that message definitely everyone in the team should know the story like i'm talking in terms of an elevator pitch it's the the about us column in your website that everyone has something that everyone in the organization should know and should speak that same language whether it is someone who is sitting at the reception or someone who's sitting in a cabin inside everyone should speak that same language that's very important because you never know when your supporter is speaking to whom in in your organization so it's not enough just to say that okay this message let this person give everyone should be speaking that speaking that the same language that your nonprofit speaks right got it okay so i think that's about it thank you so much uh, for answering all our questions very patiently and sorry for that uh, tech glitch that we faced no problem um, ida so i think there is one question from siddharth he says are there special issues when it comes to using children in your storytelling like safety and before you answer that if anybody else has any questions please put them in the chat feature yeah please go ahead so i'm just going to read that because are there special issues when it comes to using children in your storytelling for example safety yes i think it's important to get consent it's important to tell them tell who the people whose images whose photographs you're taking inform them that you're doing it for xyz reason and only if they're comfortable you use them other than that i think if you're coming from a good place that you're not coming from a place to exploit people so i think i personally think it should be fine but yes you do need consent just as if if it were me and if someone were to use my photograph or my quote anywhere i would like to be i would like to know where you're using it and why you're using it before i give uh, my permission uh, for it to be used and that is true for all your beneficiaries not just for children even if it's that shg and that woman who is who's going to be who's going to benefit from the fundraising that will happen for her shg so it's important to take permission i think some organizations definitely in terms of one of the things that cuddles does is that we say that if anyone else other than cuddles has to use the pictures that we share then we definitely would like to know because you're taking consent on behalf they you're taking the consent to be used on your platforms so it's not for everyone uh, to be put out there and if you're sharing it with the donors especially then it's good to let them know that please do not circulate it without letting us know that you are doing so so that we can at least verify where it goes up and we can most mostly I mean donors really i've noticed like in india they're not really into sharing stuff they like to receive but very rarely they want to put it out but so that's not a problem but it's good to let them know from a safety perspective so that no one feels exploited at the end of the day yeah that's a very good question siddharth i think most ngos in in india don't follow uh, that ethical rule they do take their beneficiaries for granted and use their pictures and stories without consent so that's a very important point and uh, it's good anisha said that you know responsible ngos do take consent and restrict the usage okay so thank you so much anisha that was uh, a very interesting session on storytelling we've had a very small audience today for probably because it's a holiday i'm not very sure uh, but our story will go up on all our technology platforms and it will be accessible to the global community i'm sure it's going to be helpful to a lot more people thank you so much thank you thanks for having me 